are some pop videos. Nothing more than soft porn. Music producer Mike Stock of Stock, Aitken and Waterman fame, Kylie, Jason, all that, the men behind the success of those, and Rick Astley, among others, says he wouldn't wait, watch, uh, let his kids watch videos by artists like Lady Gaga or Britney Spears. He reserves his harshest comments for R&B music, which he says is 99% soft porn. This being the radio, we clearly can't show you any of the videos, but here's some of the offending songs. Obviously, uh, can't see these songs, but I'll try and describe them for you. They look a little bit hot while I'm doing it. Um, Katy Perros, California Girls, Snoop Dogg, Lady Gaga, which was banned. Uh, Naked Women on Clouds in the video. Elias Rock the Boat, Wanna Love You, Akon, Snoop Dogg, Britney Spears, If You Seek Amy, Call On Me, Eric Pritz. Um, have music videos gone too far? With me tonight, two parents, but also journalist Kelly Rose Bradford. Good evening, Kelly Rose. Good evening. And music producer and writer O.D. Hunter. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. I'm getting a bit carried away. Um, <laughs> Kelly, is Mike Stock right? Is, are these just soft porn? <laughs> I think he is right. I, I do actually agree with him. Um, I'm a little um, at odds with what he's saying in some respects, though, because I, I think he's um, quite a, um, an odd person to be making the comments, um, you know, given that he has been part of, of the music industry for so long. Um, I, I find it quite um, disingenuous in some respects. Doing my research this afternoon, I was um, having a quick look at Sunita back in the 80s on Top of the Pops in um, a very, very short skirt and stocking tops on show, singing along to Toy Boy, which I believe was um, written and produced by um, by by Stock Aitken and Waterman. So, um, yeah, I, I do agree with him. I've got a seven-year-old son. I have to police what he sees um, in terms of music videos and, indeed, what um, what he hears on the radio. If I've kind of picked up on some lyrics and I kind of, you know, hear the opening op opening bars of it coming on the radio and I know it's something that is going to, um, you know, interest him and he's going to start asking questions and I will turn it off. And we have had incidents in the past where he has asked about particular lyrics on songs and what, what they mean. Um, so, Yes, I, I do agree with what um, with what Mike has said, but um, I just um, I just think it's quite interesting that it is coming from him. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we can actually ask Mike Stock tomorrow because he's on with Richard Bacon on Five Live. Uh, do you think, OD, that that I mean, sex has always sold, hasn't it? Of That's what it rock does, and yeah. roll. Yeah. I mean, rock and roll actually means sex, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and the thing is that uh, you know nothing is new when it comes to music. It's all cyclic. It's all been done before. Um, well, has it? I mean, I watched some of the 50 Cent videos, and I yeah. must admit, he's getting pretty close to He's getting pretty close, but, you know, doing I've, been, it. I've, been do <laughs> I've been doing some research this afternoon as well, and, you know, we can go back to the 80s, um, which is when, because that, that article actually qu quoted some um, lyrics from, from, obviously, from the 80s, but you can quote some other lyrics and some other song titles, for example, Marvin Gaye's Sexual Healing, there's uh, George Michael's I Want Your Sex in 1987, there was... Uh, Prince of Purple, who, you know, on the Purple Rain album in 1984. But these are the lyrics. There's not actually the videos at sort of 10 True. in the morning when kids are watching CBeebies on another channel. Well, if you go to MTV Base, you yeah. can actually see girls lying by the pool simulating sex. It's slightly different, isn't it? Well, I, I guess I guess so. You could say it's slightly different. But the thing is, you know, what's shocking is, is certainly changed. Um, and, uh, you know, if you go back to the 80s, for example, you go to the uh, George Michael video, I Want Your Sex, um, you know, there was, you know, there was a lot of kind of simulated sex, women in the same sort of uh, outfits as you have Lady Gaga wearing these days. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's been around for, for ages and it, it's just, you know, it's, it's in a slightly different, maybe it's a little bit more in your face, but it's, it's, uh, and it's certainly there's more kind of access to videos because of YouTube and because of, you know, the kind of gazillion amounts of, uh, 
uh, uh, kind of uh, ch- television channels and stuff, but you know, it's still pretty much you know has been done mm. before. Kelly, do you think there should be some sort of watershed as to when some of these videos should be allowed? Yeah, I do definitely, and I, and I think it's always you know it's very easy to say, oh well, parents should be policing what their children are listening to and what they're watching and that sort of thing. But you know, w- with music videos and with songs and stuff, it, it is the kind of thing that does catch you completely and utterly unawares. And you know, you you can't be policing your child flicking through um, television channels um, and coming across MTV. At sort of like 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever and you know seeing videos that perhaps you would not like them to be watching it's just impossible so yes I'd, i would definitely say that you know that there are some videos that are quite obviously only suitable for an adult uh, audience or, or an older teenage but, audience and certainly not videos that i would want my seven-year-old son seeing but is it any worse now than it was say when madonna was at her raunchiest i mean i she, think it's different um it? yeah i think it is different because i think it filters through more these days and it filters through to children at a much younger age and i think um because it is just so much more more accessible um you know because you know kids are so much more aware of sort of like the internet youtube and stuff like that you know it is far more in in your face for for, for children these days um, you know, there's far more magazines aimed at children. There, there's just, you know, there's a whole industry that, that, that goes with it, you know, that, that's also part of it. But the other thing I have a huge problem with is, you know, you go to children's birthday parties these days and you see, you know, these little girls of sort of like four and five and absolutely, you know, gyrating along to all these songs, you know, copying the moves they've seen on the music videos. And it's all very well for people to say, well, they don't understand what they're doing. They're not making a sexual connection. But it's very, very uncomfortable for an adult or a parent to see children behaving in that way and moving in that way. Oh, Dee, what, what about the idea? idea that um, in order to um, progress with right. the kind of sexual side of, of videos, uh-huh. you've got to push the envelope, you've got to go further and further. <clears throat> where, where can these videos go from here? Well, before people that... literally have to perform naked. <laughs> <laughs> what do well, you do? Well, that's that's a very good question. I mean, I I don't know. Um, I mean, if I if I did know, I'd probably do it myself. Well, I'd right. Make a fortune, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, certainly the envelope has been being pushed, you know, for for a number of years. And and you know, what's kind of shocking is you know, it's, it's changed and evolved and stuff like that. And, it, and you need to push that to to kind of keep people's interest because otherwise, people just switch off and it's just like, well, this is just boring, you know. Well, I'm let me give you an example. I mean, I was watching, I think it was one of the MTV base channels the other right. night, okay. and it was a succession of, of, of videos. It would be one guy, yeah. and he'd be singing a sign, he'd be surrounded by, you know, yeah. 15 girls all yeah. gyrating, yeah. you know, yeah. their bottoms in front of them. And yeah. it would be like... But, but it, the thing is, why are we pointing at MTV base particularly? Because I don't know, it just happened not, to be the channel I was watching. I'm not, not just not picking just it out. Okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. an expert yeah. in these. It just okay. happened to be the one okay. that I was watching. Okay. Okay. And it was very... Pardon the word, but it was very misogynistic. Yeah, okay. It was. Now, whether that's unfair or not, I mean, I'm not saying it, it's good or yeah, bad, yeah, but it was yeah. on at 10 in the morning. Yeah. And it was just a succession of the sort of the same. Who was the thing. artist? Uh, oh, gosh. I can't remember. Was okay. it Jazzy B? I can't remember. Re- seriously, okay. I can't remember. Okay. But it was like, but it was a succession of artists. And yeah. It was the same kind of song the whole sort of well, time. Well, I guess the thing is, like, with all things. I'm not saying it's, it's good or bad. I'm just I'm, saying that's I what th- it was. I think what it is is, is um, every kind of genre has, you know, specific things that you expect to see in a video. Um, you know, obviously rock videos do a certain thing, yeah. dance videos do a certain thing, and and uh, for you know, for better or for worse, you know, R and B videos do a certain well, thing. Well, heavy metal's expect, the same, isn't it? Exactly. It's a young so, girls at a concert, you know, exactly. throwing so things. Exactly. Pe- so people the... expect to see see certain things for certain markets, yeah. you know. So that's kind of why that happens. But what is the market, way. though? I mean, you know, surely you know, you, you producers must be aware that you you do have you know well, huge the... influence. You you do have a very very young market, and right. perhaps you might say, well, that's not who we're aiming at. We are aiming at old teens we are aiming at young adults but you must be aware at the times your videos are being shown during the day that there is a much younger audience well the thing is um, well the thing is you need to clarify a few things producers as in music producers we don't dictate what happens in the videos unless you are you know a huge producer and you've actually got but are there uh, rules control. about what you can and can't show or uh, is it literally there, there might be there might be rules but that's not dictated by the producers okay. it's you know the rules would be dictated by the you know the kind of uh, broadcasters associations or what have you they would kind of you know edit and or rate videos and say you know this is allowed and that's that's allowed but that happens you know from a that's a dialogue that happens between the record company and the uh, you know the standards See, this is a thing that I didn't it's un- not the music producers that because get on the, on the in one hand in a video you can sh- you can show all sorts of raunchiness and yet of course, if, yeah. if if 
if Janet Jackson shows a nipple, yeah. the whole of America <laughs> explodes with anger. You see, but this is yeah. a really Incredible. interesting thing, but isn't it? I mean, the levels of raunchiness that you would <laughs> see... <laughs> <laughs> you, you, really? Was it? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it must have been, because it's just... If you look at the actual... I mean, the, f- the fact that she had, like, a tassel on there, you know, it means that she, she obviously expected it to come off. And, and the amount of... That's kind fine, of then. The amount of, uh, the amount of publicity that it generated after, you know, it, it, it had to have been staged. If we can just come back to the point that Ian made before about, mm. um, you know, the, about the, um, you would not expect to see those scenes elsewhere other than, other than in a video. Right. I mean, I find that quite interesting because, you know, it, it's, it's perfectly true. You would not see scenes like that at, you know, at, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. You would not be able to turn your television on yeah. and, and have sort of like, you know, um, you know, scantily clad, partially clothed ladies sort of like draping themselves over various men sort of like, you know, on, on primetime television. It wouldn't be allowed. Why is this allowed to be got away with in music videos? Why is the music industry allowed to do that? Well, um, I mean, I, I can't answer for the actual music, music industry, but yeah, sex sells, you know. Um, I've got to so is sex the only thing that does sell, sell music? Well, it's not the only thing, but, you know, since time, it's a thing that's been a big part of it. But it's, you know, you look at other products, you look at, you know, for example, we are just talking about David Beckham. I mean, he's obviously uh, a huge role model and, and he's very sexy and he's used to sell products. Yeah, but it's that's, the same thing. That's, yeah. But he was a footballer first, wasn't he? I mean, then they, then, you know, he had his talent and his skill. Yeah, then listen, they used but his sexuality he's still, to, to he's sell still getting further. his clothes. He's I've, still getting his kid off to sell I've, products. I've, he's going to have to now, isn't he? His football career's over. I'd love to talk about pants and shiny torsos. I really would, but I'm going to have to end it there. Okay. Thank you very much to thank Kelly you. Rose Branford okay, and to uh, O.D. Hunt. Uh, if you want to comment on that, 85058. We can't get away from Bex, can we? Or, te- or uh, phone us 0500 It's so late. It's 25 to midnight.